So, journey to Kush, when did I fall in love with Hulu? I have been in the essence of spirituality for quite some time. If you are a person that was raised in the South among your grandparents, um, people who are in the Baptist church, you likely have experienced some level of hoodoo in your day-to-day life. Um, So I've always been in touch with spirituality. I've always been in touch with the otherworldly things. I have been like magical my whole fucking life i remember being in elementary school and coming in and really like being into rocks and being into well, crystals you know at the time rocks and hanging with the girls that were into that shit and then like i allowed myself to kind of you know like if you can't beat them join them type deal and i allowed myself to be like almost bullied into joining the crowd. So I kind of shifted away from it for quite some time. But I believe if you are at this point, usually you could tell you were in, on that type of time from your younger days. Um, I've always been, like I said, very spiritual. And I have had the gift for quite some time, the gift of sight. Um When I fell in love with hoodoo specifically was, like, when I knew what it was, um, I think that probably about right before COVID, I started to get in touch with my spirituality and started to really see that I had abilities, like, I could use to further me. So, yeah, I got back deep into it. I started going through my spiritual awakenings. Um, It was situations with, like, relatives, um, situation with past lovers, partners. They just showed me that I was under spiritual attack, like I was going through spiritual warfare. And I leaned more into my spirituality, like... But I will say, in the beginning, I was a little bit more arrogant. Um, You know how you learn something, but you don't necessarily take all of the steps. Like, there are so many other steps to it, like protection. um, And I should have been not like divulging things to everyone. You know, cats out of the bag now, but at the time, I feel like, Before I kind of equipped myself, I should have been, like, more about protecting myself and keeping things to myself. Because as soon as people realized that I had a gift, I was spiritually attacked uh, and physically attacked. I don't know if you guys saw that movie by Monique. Uh, Well, it's not by Monique, but Monique was in it with the psychic. And she, the psychic, basically called Monique out on a murder. And then Monique tried to kill the lady in the movie. I went through something very, very similar um, with people that I trusted um, and had known all my life. And that really kind of ascended me even further. But, like, I had started to meditate. I had started to do yoga. Um... And again, I feel like it was kind of like an arrogance now that I look back on it because I didn't know as much as I know now. I wasn't really doing proper divination and I was like excited. You know, you'd be excited. You want to tell everybody. But yeah, I didn't approach that from a very balanced or grounded space. Um, So now as I teach people, I'd be like, hey, make sure because you you never know. Like they real life tried me. And if spirit and my elevated ancestors didn't have my back, I at this point in my life, I would be somewhere locked up. you know, in the net house because, you know, and it's not because, okay, first let me say this, I didn't have like a psychosis moment. They tried to perpetuate it as a psychosis moment, but in actuality, my um, cannabis was laced. Once they realized that I could read them and their secrets and I knew more than I should have known, um, someone very close to me laced my weed and that is what, uh uh-oh, that's what pushed that that type of reaction, and then they immediately 
Um, well, they didn't immediately do shit. They held me for 24 hours and then they drove me two hours away and tried to commit me into a hospital two hours away. So that was a very traumatic experience uh, for myself as well as my kids, but it taught me a very valuable lesson. And now, of course, I'm, I'm, I don't play no games about my protection work. Um, but at the time, I obviously, I was gung-ho, so that shit can cost you. Let me throw that out there. It can cost you your life. It can cost you your freedom. So you have to be mindful because everybody don't want their secrets known, even by you. You know, everybody don't want that exposure, things that they hide, you know, in the shadows. So, again, a very valuable lesson. But I fell in love with hoodoo even in those dark times because while I even was going through but yeah, so over time, I realized that just like our elders and our ancestors, I could do certain things. I could help myself. I could help people around me. Um, so I fell in love with the idea of being able to balance the scales and being able to turn, you know, spin the wheel in my favor if it was aligned with what spirit wanted to see for me and mine. I was, I had the ability to you know, being time. I had the ability to read. I had the ability to see. Um, so one of my abilities is I can see spirits on people. I can see the other side. I can see your lightness. I can see your darkness. Um, and it's it was a burden at first. But when I realized and I was trained with it, then I became more embracing I embraced it more um I knew how to handle it um but then once you you know discover your clairvoyance or your claircognizance etc cetera, etc cetera, then you move into like doing the physical of the root work and conjure and that's to me where the dope shit comes in because we all have some abilities like spiritual abilities that we don't tap into uh but when I realized that I could been time that I could, like I said, like, um, change my circumstances. If it was aligned, that's when I was like, I, right, that's what's up. i I said to myself, I would never raw dog life again. Once I had that key, it would never happen to me again. Uh, but you'd be surprised at how many people will like try to stop you from tapping into that side of yourself simply because they can't, or they're afraid. Um, but it is innately in all of us to have certain gifts. You just, but it's so crazy because sometimes their second person will come out to play. And I be feeling like people don't even realize that their second person is speaking to me. Like they think they're still operating with their mask and like spirit takes their mask off. Now I've had instances before I got comfortable with that shit was scary because they don't know. They don't know that they've been taken over. They don't know that I can see the other side, you know, that, that demon on them, that spirit on them, that shit comes out. Um, so before I got comfortable facing that, uh, I was afraid of it, but I fell in love with the the idea of conjure. I fell in love with the idea of root work. I've always been into herbs too. So I love working with herbs i love working with the earth i love you know mama mama earth i love working with dad i love doing what i do <laughs> so i would say i fell in love with the hoodoo during a time where i was being heavily oppressed and spirit and my elevated ancestors and my gods they gave me a way out um and sometimes you have to learn lessons you know, so you can refine your path. But I have even the lesson, the lesson, like there were blessings that came out of those instances um, at the end of the day. So I fell in love with hoodoo. I fell in love with the journey of becoming a more refined practitioner. I love hoodoo because it never gets boring.
Um, there's always something to do. There's always more to learn. Um, and I have the type of personality where I have to be stimulated a lot. So knowing that I'm doing something professionally that I could never really get bored with to me is amazing. I'm also an artist, but, but yeah, so I fell in love with the concept of hoodoo in my darkest hour. Um, I see a lot of people say they don't like to read cards anymore. They don't enjoy that type of divination tool. I love the cards. I feel like it's like a idea of having a conversation with your granny or your auntie and they give you the tea. Um, so I love reading cards. That's one of my favorite things to do. I'm a little bit of a loner, popular loner, if you will. So sometimes, you know, you can just sit up and read your cards and the spirits will, they will give you the tea. And it's, I, it's rare. It's very rare that it is wrong. Like they be all pretty much every time they be on point, you know, um, but a lot of people are afraid of that. Prior to me getting into reading tarot cards, I was doing something called Bibliomancy and didn't even realize that's what I was doing. Uh, so that's the process of flipping over the Bible and being able to read a situation uh, based on the scripture that spirit leads you to. So I was doing something like that prior to reading cards. And um, I thought that was interesting when I realized that's what I was doing. I've also... I'm a Pisces, excuse me, I'm a Pisces, so I be needing clarity because sometimes, you know, we can be kind of confused because we absorb a lot of energy, we reflect a lot of energy back. So for me, doing the cards was like, I loved it because I could clarify shit without people trying to like gaslight me and play in my face. So that was, that was lit. Um, but yeah, I love what I do. I I feel like hoodoo is something that you have to dedicate your life to. It's nothing that you could just do sometimes. It's something that you have to embody. Like, it's almost... So, if you're asking, like, will you get initiated? Yes, you will. Uh, there are different ways to initiation. One day, I'll do, like, a separate video about that. But, yes, I was initiated. And, yes... I have had my gifts confirmed, um, but you, to me, you won't be granted like certain levels if spirit feels like you won't do right. So, and there's a pe lot of people that like to play, play, or, you know, pretend, and then they catch that, you know, backlash, but honestly, you are able to tap into certain levels based on your frequency. So it's, it's got to be good. It's got to be up there. And when I say good and up there, I mean, justified, righteous, like type shit. So, um, that can be kind of like a, a moment because it's, I'm sad and ruled. So it's really hard for me to like be out here just doing any old thing because daddy Saturn, you know, don't play. You know, you will just as quick as people will get their karma for fucking with you. You will also get karma for not doing things the way you should. So I feel like that's another reason why I was blessed with these abilities, because I have been wired cosmically to just not even be able to do certain shit without like, like, you know, blowback from spirit. But yeah, I fell in love with hoodoo. And now I couldn't really see myself doing anything else um, professionally um, in a way that I got to do it like every day. Like I get bored easily. So like I said, hoodoo is fun. It is interesting. It is dangerous, but it's lit. <laughs> um, and I never get bored. Like I said, there's so many books, so many things to learn, um, so many processes and so I am raising hoodoo children. They are well aware of the processes and the rituals and what we do. Nothing is hid from them. They are being trained up, which is something a lot of us didn't have the pleasure of doing because a lot of our elders and ancestors didn't want to really acknowledge that they were doing things or they were too afraid. So... I feel very blessed to be able to train my children and um, them to be able to incorporate that into their daily lives. So we are the Ehudu family. We we are. 
Um, I, if for context, I am of indigenous heritage. I'm a Creek Indian. My grandfather is Jamaican. Um, in my world, though, we are we operate off a of matrilineal lineage. So, for context, we are Creek Indian. So yeah, I love it. I love hoodoo. I love doing work. I love seeing the results of my work and. I practice every day. It's become a lifestyle. Like I was saying earlier, it's a lifestyle. Um, you can't just bleed in and out. I mean, if your person is just going to get services, I guess. But if you're practicing, you can't just bleed in and out of this. It, it don't work like that. <laughs> you, it's, It has to be ingrained. So, yeah. That's how I fell in love with hoodoo. Um... And I feel like that's a very authentic way. During the oppression, during the struggle, you know, you come out like the phoenix. You come out on the other side and you realize, like, oh, I got a little something extra. And that's when you fall in love and you keep going. So, yeah. Don't forget to follow, like, share, and subscribe. I hope this story helps someone. I love you guys. and we'll So, I am raising hoodoo children they are well aware of the processes and the rituals and what we do nothing is hid from them they are being trained up which is something a lot of us didn't have the pleasure of doing because a lot of our elders and ancestors didn't want to really acknowledge that they were doing things or they were too afraid so I feel very blessed to be able to train my children and um, them to be able to incorporate that into their daily lives. So we are the a hoodoo family. We we are. Um, I, if for context, I am of indigenous heritage. I'm a Creek Indian. My grandfather is Jamaican. Um, in my world, though, we are we operate off a of matrilineal lineage. So for context, we are Creek Indian. So yeah. I love it. I love hoodoo. I love doing work. I love seeing the results of my work. And I practice every day. It's become a lifestyle. Like I was saying earlier, it's a lifestyle. Um, you can't just bleed in and out. I mean, if your person is just going to get services, I guess. But if you're practicing, you can't just bleed in and out of this. It, it don't work like that. <laughs> You, it's, it has to be ingrained. So, yeah, that's how I fell in love with hoodoo. Um, and I feel like that's a very authentic way. During the oppression, during the struggle, you know, you come out like the phoenix. You come out on the other side and you realize, like, oh, I got a little something extra. And that's when you fall in love and you keep going. So, yeah. Don't forget to follow, like, share, and subscribe. I hope this story helps someone. I love you guys, and we'll.